Howdy and welcome to the 10 Week Bible Study. This is week five, day four of our study of Joshua. I'm your host, Darren Hibbs, and today we're talking about Joshua 12, 9 through 24. Welcome back to the 10-week Bible study. Again, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs. Would you join me as we pray before we start today? Lord, would you open our eyes and our ears to hear what your word has to say to us, God? Speak to us and fill our hearts with the knowledge of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With that, let's go ahead and jump into God's word. We're reading today from the NIV. This is Joshua 12, starting in verse 9. And we're actually going to, I'm just going to read real quick. I don't have it uh, presented here, but uh, the previous verse was the kings of the west side of the Jordan are, and here we jump into verse 9. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai near Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jarmuth, one. The king of Lachish. And I, I want to pause right there because it says the king of Jerusalem won. So uh, what we understand from this is Joshua at this moment did not conquer Jerusalem. He killed the king, but he did not conquer Jerusalem. It, we're told that very specifically. In fact, they don't, the, the Israelites don't actually conquer Jerusalem until Judges chapter 1, I believe. Uh, they take it. And and then we find out, as I said yesterday, it's all a very dynamic situation. They take Jerusalem in, in Judges 1, but then they lose it. And the way that, that Judges 1 is describing it, it could be like looking into the past. So it could be that Judges 1 is giving us a, a rundown on what happened leading up to the book of Judges, that during the time of Joshua and after Joshua's time, they did take Jerusalem, but then they lost it again to the Jebusites. In fact, we know that it, at one point it becomes known as Jebus, the capital of the Jebusites, uh, and no longer Jerusalem, or at least colloquially, it's not called Jerusalem at some point. And so, again, it's a very dynamic situation. And so some of these, the kings were conquered, but not necessarily the cities. And we know that even if the Israelites did conquer some of these cities, we know that at some point, some of them they lost and regained. And so it's, it's really this divine dynamic struggle. Uh, all right, with that, let's continue on. I will go to the map as soon as we're done and kind of lay out where all of these things are. Verse 12, the king of Eglon, one. The king of Gezer, one. And again, the king of Gezer, the, the city of Gezer, they didn't take at this point, but we, we know that they killed the king of Gezer. They took the, the king of Gezer. And actually tomorrow we're going to see uh, and talk about how that's borne out by the extra biblical history on the matter. Verse 13, the king of Debir, one. The king of Geder, one. The king of Hormah, one. The king of Arad, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adullam, one. The king of Makeda, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tapua, one. The king of Hefer, one. The king of Aphek, one. The king of Lesheron, one. The king of Madon, one. The king of Hazor, one. The king of Shimron Miron, one. The king of Akshaf, one. The king of Tanakh, one. The king of Megiddo, one. The king of Kadesh, one. The king of Jokneam in Carmel, one. The king of Dor in Naphoth, Dor, one. The king of Goyim in Gilgal, one. The king of Tirzah, one. 31 kings in all. All right, so the way that it tells us those cities and those kings is it's kind of going this almost like figure eight pattern where we're starting in, in South central Israel, going down to South Israel and then jumping back up to Northern Israel and then kind of coming back down to a little bit more central Israel is the way that it's describing that. So let's go back and look at the map. And again, 10 week slash Joshua, and we'll see the maps. Now here, we'll go ahead and start with what we've got here. Jericho, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and circle these and we're going to go through them. Boom, boom, boom. Jericho right there. We've got I is right next to it right there. Then we've got Jerusalem, Hebron, and Jarmuth. So we've got Jerusalem here, Hebron there, and Jarmuth is right there. Um, next, we've got Lachish, which is right next to, or not far from Jarmuth there. Then we move on to Eglon, Gezer, and Debir. So Eglon is down here, Debir, and Gezer is up here. Now, Gezer was a king that had come down and helped attack the, the Israelites during some of these battles in this area right here. But the Israelites didn't immediately take his city. In fact, we know that during the time of Joshua, I don't believe that they took the city of Gezer. 
Uh, continuing on, we've got, uh, let's see, Eglon, Gezer, and Debir, Getter, Horma, and, and Arad. Getter is there. Horma is down here, and Arad is the furthest southern city that we have listed. Continuing on, kind of in the south, we've got Libna, Adullam, and Makeda. So Libna there, Adullam is here. It gets very uh, thick in there. And uh, the last one was Makeda, which is right there, that city right there. The king of Bethel, which is up here near Ai. Maybe I should just color in their dots. That would work better. And then Tapua and Hefer. Tapua is a little bit further north right there. And then the last one we've got there is Hefer, which is moving north. Now, I put the city of Shiloh on here just to reference where Shiloh is. It's not listed in this, but Shiloh immediately after this chapter, starting in verse in chapter 13 and then on, Shiloh is going to become important because Shiloh is going to be the place where the Israelites are kind of good. They're going to move a little bit from Gilgal. They're still going to have a camp at Gilgal, but they're going to start to kind of set up Shiloh as, as the unofficial capital of this new nation of Israel for some time moving forward, all the way even down to uh, uh, uh Samuel is going to kind of operate in and around Shiloh. So this is going to become an important city in the nation of Israel moving forward. All right. Continuing on on the map, we're moving north now. And we've got Aphek here. We've got Lesheron and Madon. And that's going to be up here in the north. Lesheron and Madon. These are cities that we're not terribly clear on. The king of Hazor, we talked extensively about him already. He's up here. Um, and then the king of Shimron, Miron, and Akshaf. So some of these get uh, really confusing. There's a lot of debate over where that is. And Akshaf, I don't think there's as much debate about that. <clears throat> Moving on, we've got Tanakh, Medigo, Megiddo. Um, so Tanakh right here, Megiddo here. Megiddo, of course, is going to be an important city in the book of Revelation. There's a plain outside of the area of Megiddo, a very large open plain. And in the book of Revelation, it tells us that the armies of the world are going to assemble in Megiddo and prepare to make an assault on the city of Jerusalem to go and attack Jesus and the armies of heaven. Uh, very, very strange encounter where the armies of the earth, physical people, it's almost like this, this battle between good and evil amongst, you know, the like, like in Lord of the Rings, but you've actually got literal human beings who are going to come and fight God himself. Um, a lot of people call this the Valley of Armageddon. The, the word Har Megiddo is the Valley of Megiddo, the valley near Megiddo. Uh, the battle actually doesn't play, take place in Megiddo. The Valley of Megiddo, Har Megiddo, Armageddon, is actually the staging grounds. It's where they assemble to get ready for battle because it's, it's going to be a lot of people, essentially. All right, back to the map. Kadesh and Jokneam and Carmel. So we've got Kadesh is up here. It's the further northern city that we have listed and then uh, we had Jokneam and Carmel, which is right there. Uh, Dor, essentially Gilgal and Tirza. So we've got Dor here. We know where Gilgal is. It's right here. And then Tirza is right there in the center of the nation of Israel. And it tells us that there were 31 kings in all that were conquered on the west side of the Jordan River. Again, they didn't necessarily immediately take all of those cities. Some of the cities that Joshua and the Israelites took, they subsequently lost and regained and lost and regained, sometimes several times. And there's also other cities that we know um, this isn't giving us the full picture. This is giving us kind of like the 30,000 foot view, now the very for sure view of what Joshua took. But we also know, again, from the first couple of chapters of the book of Judges, that there are cities that they did take and lost and took and lost and, and different things like that, that it doesn't bring up here. There's, there's a lot going on. Again, what I want to convey with all of this is a very dynamic situation. A lot is happening, and we are getting, uh, at best, the Reader's Digest version of what's going on. And again, because it says it here, it doesn't mean that they held these things, that they took the cities. 
this is an ongoing effort to subdue the land of Israel. And it's going to be an ongoing effort for 400 years. This is the beginning of it. Now, the beginning of it is quite remarkable. What they've taken in a short period of time is nothing short of remarkable. And I have some theories uh, about how they did that beyond just, you know, God knocking down walls and things like that. I think there's some very real world things going on happening in this this region at this time that is is making it easy for the Israelites to conquer these city states. And I, I, I mean, I have to believe that the Lord, he's kind of the puppet master of all this. He's pulling the strings and he's setting all of this up to make it to where the Israelites are, they are actually having to physically go in and subdue this land with swords and spears and all of that. But at the same time, the Lord has made it essentially very easy to conquer this land because of, in my opinion, some of the the extra biblical information that we have about the region at the time. And for that, I can't wait to jump into that tomorrow. For that discussion, join us on week five, day five tomorrow on the 10-week Bible study. For now, I'm your host, Darren Hibbs. And I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the 10 week Bible study. If you've enjoyed this, would you consider doing that whole like and subscribe and bell thing? You're always hearing people talk about. It really helps other people find out about the show. And my heart is for people to fall in love with God's word. Thank you. Thank you.